So let me just tell you straight up, if you are new to photography and videography and you just are starting your business, Thumbtack could be a great place to start for you. However, if you are a more seasoned photographer and videographer, business owner, and you have built up some sort of clout in your niche, it may be a good idea to just back off from using Thumbtack. Yo, what's going on people? It's your boy Wiz back again with another video. So if you are a new photographer or videographer and you are seeking to know how to use Thumbtack to generate leads and get some business, or if you are a more seasoned photographer and videographer and you've been on Thumbtack and you really don't know if you should continue using it or if it's worth it, or maybe you're not doing something right, you have come to the right place because in today's video, I'm gonna give my over all review of just using Thumbtack as a photographer and videographer, the good, the bad, and ugly, whether you should even bother with using it, all that's gonna be in this video. And just so you know that I'm not just some random dude that's just making a video and I've never used Thumbtack before, here is my profile right here, as you can see, with Snap Productions, got my same profile picture that I got on YouTube, 21 reviews, although I have been hired upwards of 30 times. You see my little bio there. Uh, I don't want to scroll down too much because it'll show my phone number. But um, as you see, year founded 2017. And here is some of my work right here that I have on here for people, um, potential clients to view when they hire me. And here are some reviews of my services, all 21 of them. So let me just tell you straight up, if you are new to photography and videography and you just are starting your business, Thumbtack could be a great place to start for you. However, if you are a more seasoned photographer and videographer, business owner, and you have built up some sort of clout in your niche, it may be a good idea to just back off from using Thumbtack. So if you're just not that clear on what Thumbtack is, Thumbtack is a place where people come to hire pros. Now, I mainly utilize it on my cell phone, and on the cell phone, there are two different apps. There's the regular Thumbtack app, which is the white and blue logo, which people go on and, you know, whether they're searching for photographers, videographers, painters, personal trainers, any, you know, type of uh, job, service type of job, you can go on the Thumbtack app as a, you know, customer and you can search for a pro to fulfill your need. Now, the second app that I use and that you will be using if you use Thumbtack is the Thumbtack Pro app. This is pretty much the app that the pros like myself use to, you know, get leads, get clients, and hopefully get hired. Now, one thing I want to speak on briefly that I will touch on more in detail a little bit later in this video is the history of Thumbtack as it pertains to the pricing, how pros are charged when using Thumbtack now. It's totally free to use Thumbtack, you know, as a customer looking for a pro to do a job. Now, when Thumbtack, well, I don't want to I don't want to say when it first came out, but when I first started using Thumbtack, it used to be a little bit more flexible as to uh, the type of jobs you can be charged for as a pro. Before, you used to be able to set your preferences and based on your preferences, they'll be like, hey, here goes this lead right here. You'd be able to review the whole lead and either be like, yay or nay, I want to be able to message this person. If you decline to message that person, then you wouldn't be charged. It'd just be like, I can't do it. That's it. But Thumbtack changed probably about, I'm going to say, three to four years ago that pretty much based on the preferences and the way you have things set up, it's just like, boom, here goes the lead. You've been charged for it. Whether the job is good for you or not, it's like, boom, here it is. You've been charged for it. Whether you can do it or not, it doesn't really matter at this point. Thumbtack got their money. Now, there's certain things you can do to make sure that that really doesn't happen to you. But like I said, I'll speak on that later in the video. Just wanted to briefly speak on how the pricing used to work versus how it worked, because that's a big deal. So first, I want to go into my tips for using Thumbtack to generate leads, to get business, to get jobs, and to get paid. Now, the number one thing you're going to want to make sure you do in using Thumbtack is to optimize your profile so that when people discover you, you just have a certain, you know, official look to you like you're running a business. So first things first, you're going to want to make sure you have a good name for your business and you have a good profile picture for your business. Now, after doing my research back in that day, I discovered that people kind of like businesses that have people's names and people's like real, you know, 
face in a picture. Now, if you have, if you're, I mean, if your business is named what it's named, that's cool. But from my experience and from research that I've done, like people like to see your face. They like to know what the person that they're going to be essentially working with, especially if it's like a wedding, they want to know what you look like. So even if you have like a, a name, like, you know, uh, shots, shots, LLC or something like that, even if you put your face on there or if you have a logo, use your logo, see how that works for you. But like I said, in my experience, I have learned that people want to see your face. And if you use your name, it kind of goes better with your face. So my second tip for optimizing your profile is you want to make sure that the services that you say you offer are accurate to what you actually offer. Now, we all know there's so many subcategories to video and photo, whether it's, you know, events, corporate, headshots, boudoir, aerial photography. Now, you don't want to have that you do aerial photography just to get leads and you don't even own a drone or you don't even really offer that service. If you're just like strictly a wedding photographer, they have a category wedding and events. That's the only one you want checked. You don't want like headshots if you don't do headshots because, you know, they're going to try to hire you. And if you're not really equipped to do it and you've already been charged because they match you with that lead, it's just like a waste of time and a waste of your money. So make sure you have the accurate services that you actually offer, you know, checked off. So Thumbtack knows how to pair you with the right people. And to piggyback off of the services that you offer on your profile, you're going to definitely, definitely want to make sure you have at least one example for every service that you say that you offer. Now for me, I eventually pivoted into like wedding and event photography and it was so hard to get hired initially for a wedding because I would be messaging people, you know, conversations going good and then it would be always one question that just messed me up. It would be, hey, can you send me an example? And I'm like, dang. I've, I've never shot a wedding before, but you know, I would end up saying like, yeah, I really don't have an example, but I would just show them anything I have. Now to piggyback off of what I just said about services, you are definitely going to want to have on your profile, at least one example, video or photo or, or whatever of every single service that you say you offer. So if you offer a wedding videography, wedding photography, headshots and corporate, you need to have an example of each because what you're going to do is you got to understand you are a pro that is going up against other pros to get a job. So if they message four people, and sometimes Stumptack, they message three, four, five, six people at a time, right? If you're the one person or one of the people that don't have an example to show that, yeah, I have done this before, this is my work then it's a very slim chance that you're going to get hired competing against other people. That was a big, big, big thing that I experienced in doing wedding videography because I knew I knew how to handle a camera. I knew, you know, the proper settings and how to do this and how to do that. The client don't care about all that. You know, I used to get asked all the time, hey, you know, hey, everything sounds good. Do you have an example? And I would always get stuck there and I wouldn't get the job. It wasn't until I got a referral from someone I went to school with, finally did that first wedding, put it on my profile. And then, you know, they would see when they're searching me up or searching for a pro that, hey, okay, this guy says he does weddings. He has an example. A lot of people like that video that I had on there. So it was just like, all right, cool. Like, you know, let's talk. So they already knew going in that this guy has experience. Another tip I want to give you is that if a potential customer reaches out to you, you want to respond to them as quickly as possible. See, one thing people don't know about Thumbsack is they make it look like, you know, this person reached out to you and you only. Now, granted, they will say that they will have like something listed if they only reached out to you. But a lot of people think that like when they're reached out to on Thumbsack, that the person actually sought after you. It wasn't until like I personally was trying to hire someone to paint my garage that I saw how that works sometimes. Now, sometimes, like, say if you go on Thumbtack as a customer, you know, the regular Thumbtack version, and you, you're looking for a specific service, and you like, like, say, one person, you can click on that person's profile and say, okay, I want to message this person, right? As you go through uh, clicking all the prompts, they'll be like, hey, uh, here goes uh, all these other businesses that offer the same thing. Do you want to reach out to them, too? So if I say, oh, yeah, this person looks good, this person looks good, this person looks good, and I end up reaching out to five people, when I finally send it out, boom, five people are getting the notification that, hey, Marbu is interested in getting his garage painted. So it looks like, oh, this guy reached out to me. But no, what I really did was reached out to one person, and then Thumbtack asked me, hey, what about these people? And I just said, hey, yeah, let me just reach out to them. So if you want to really put yourself in position, if you respond first, 
you'll end up getting on their radar when they weren't even the ones where you weren't even the ones that they initially, you know, click to reach out to. You'll bring their attention to your profile and say, if they're looking for a wedding videographer and you have some real good wedding videos on there, it's like, Hey, well, this guy, you know, he responded quick. He has the examples. Let's talk. Let's see if we can, you know, maybe hire you. My last tip as it pertains to optimizing your profile is you want to keep your calendar updated. Now there is a feature on Thumbtack that you can use where you can like open up a calendar and you can literally X out a day, like say, okay, the first uh, three weeks of January or the hell, the whole month of January, I'm not working. I'm not, you know, taking class until March the 1st. You can literally X out January and February and you will not be sent any leads, you know, in January or February. Now, the reason that this became extra important is like I said earlier in the video, once they changed that pricing structure to where, you know, initially they would present you with a lead. Hey, this lead is on January 15th. You already know I'm not working in January. So, you know, can I do, I'm not charged. Now, if you forget to update your calendar or you just don't do it, they're going to pair you with someone who's looking for a wedding videographer. If you're, you know, if you offer wedding videographer services and they click on your name and then you're going to end up getting charged and Thumbtack's not going to care that you're, that you planned on not working, you know, the month of January, they're going to be like, Hey, look, these are the preferences that you had set. You know, you should have had your calendar updated pretty much. And mind you, these leads are, you know, from about the lowest I've seen, like $13 all the way up to like 37 40 50 dollars so nobody wants to get charged 30 40 nobody wants to get charged anything if you know they are not even in position to do the job so you're going to want to make sure you definitely definitely keep your calendar updated now another thing you're going to want to make sure that you do is you set a budget as to the amount of money you are willing to pay for leads within a given week or month or whatever and i'm not going to lie me myself I always keep mine on like the highest amount of leads, like no price. I don't have no price cut off. So I'm not even sure if they do it by the week or by the month. But if you know you can only spend like $100 a week on leads, say you get three $30 leads, it's, you'll be hard pressed to get one that's under 10. So they'll wait a week or, you know, to the next week before they try to pair you with another customer and charge you again. So as far as the amount that the pros are charged, it all comes down to ROI as to whether or not it is truly worth it to use Thumbtack. Beforehand, it was so easy to make sure you got paired with the best possible job for you before you got charged. Now you have to make sure you optimize your profile and get paired with those jobs, hopefully in the end. But like I said, man, it all comes down to ROI. Now, I have had leads that I paid $13 for, $27 for, that I ended up making $2,000 for. So that's a pretty good return on my $27 to turn it into $2,000. Like, you know, where are you going to do that at? But I've also had times where I'm getting charged and getting charged, especially for real estate photography. I really need to take that off my services because over the past, like, Three weeks, I've gotten three real estate leads all for $30. That's $90 in the can as to where, like, where's where's my return going to come from? Now I need to get a job for about $100 just to break even. So like I said, it all comes down to ROI. I'll give you another example. I had another lead back in, like, 2022 that was $37. It's a recurring job that I've been doing for the past year and a half that has paid me well over $20,000. However, as the wins come, the losses come, too, because in between that time, there have been plenty of uh, jobs of people reach out, and then I respond, and I know I respond at first because I responded literally within a minute. They don't say anything. Or I've even gotten to the point where I'm communicating with people and I've actually sent these people contracts and, you know, it fell through somehow, you know, they can't do it no more. They don't want to do this. And just, you know, they just stop responding. Like it's, it's, it's really like a, it's really like a crazy game. I'm not going to lie. It's a crazy game. It's, it's not as good as like, like I said earlier in the video, building up clout in your niche and people know like, all right, this guy, we know he does wedding uh, videography. You know, you're getting leads on Instagram and you don't even have to work or pay rather. Leads are just coming, you know, referrals and things like that. Like I said, thumbtacks starting out, it's no problem with it. 
uh, using it initially, but as you gain experience, you should be getting referrals and work from other places because that pay to play game is, is, it shouldn't be the only thing or the main thing that you're doing. So that's pretty much what I'm going to leave it at for this video. Now, remember, there is no shame in using Thumbtack. If you are a new photographer, a videographer, or even if you are a seasoned photographer and videographer, it's just another tool in a toolbox or a potential way to get in front of potential paying clients to pay you for your services. Now, with all that being said, do not expect to get paid top dollar from any potential client on Thumbtack. And to me, that is one of the biggest reasons why as you elevate, you know, in your business as a photographer and videographer, that Thumbtack is really just not going to be able to come with you, you know, for the long haul. It can always be a part of how you, you know, generate potential clients in down seasons, or if you just want another possible way to get, uh, you know, traffic, clients, get paid, that's all well and good. But if you really want to elevate, you know, as you become more seasoned as a pro, you should really be focusing on, you know, producing quality work that will bring you jobs to your social media channels, you know, through your social media channels and through referrals from people who you've worked with in the past. But at the same time, if you're new, there is no shame in using Thumbtack. And even if you are seasoned, it's no uh, shame in just, you know, keeping it in, you know, your flow of potential clients, but just make sure that you have everything optimized, your profile, the services that you offer. Definitely have examples of the services that you say you offer. And please, please keep your calendar updated because they will send you them leads whether you can do them or not. So this is pretty much where I'm going to leave it at with this video, man. I really hope you guys did enjoy it. And Hopefully you got some value out of it. Hopefully you know what to do with Thumbtack now. So, um, you know, leave me uh, some comments down below. Have you used Thumbtack before? Has it worked for you? Do you hate it? Do you pay for leads and not get hired? You know, let's talk about it down in the comments below. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.